Welcome to the world of luxury watches and jewellery, Baselworld 214. The world's most important industrial rendezvous reveals the most important trends from tradition to fashion glamour, right here in Switzerland, the home of watches. The Swiss watch industry ended 2013 with 21.8 billion Swiss francs turnover. Now if I look at the beginning of this year, you see that the first two months of 2014 have been good because uh, January uh, the Swiss watch export were 6.6% above the year before. What are the values that our uh, Tissot stands for? We are affordable luxury. What does it mean? I said we are gold value at silver price. So it's a statement that clearly uh, significates what Tissot is. We try, when we make a product, to utilize the best raw material, to really uh, take into consideration the most innovative ideas, like the tactile technology, or even for a mechanical watch, I mean, to take the best, best part of the, of the great artists, the watchmakers. Miss Caroline Schiffele, a warm regard here at Baselworld. It's a special honor talking about the story of Chopard. It's a pleasure to receive you. Welcome. Well, the story of Chopard is a long story. Uh, the company was founded in 1860. And actually, my parents are celebrating uh, 50 years of being in Basel, in the Basel Fair. So it's a special year also for Chopard. And uh, personally, I've started uh, when I, first time I came when I was 16, I was serving coffee and now I'm selling beautiful diamonds. What an inspiration and a story. And um, it has been quite challenging being a woman in the world of uh, jewelry and watches. Yes, it was uh, in the beginning uh, I, had to, I had to not create my place, but I had to position myself, I would say. And, um, and also make myself respected in a men's world, pretty much a men's world. But maybe this is also one of the reasons why Chopin is uh, so famous for beautiful ladies' watches, because maybe so I see it with the eyes of a woman when I design. So um, I think maybe that's one of the reasons why we are very successful with our ladies' watches. Also with the, this event and with this puzzle world also are closely connected your novelties. For example, uh, Luc Turbillon is actually a unique watch because of uh, the fireman gold. It's uh, the very first watch in the world which is completely man manufactured with fairmine gold, which means uh, the gold is completely traceable from the mine and it has been refined in a very different way so we don't spoil the nature and the people in the mine they're working under very safe working conditions there's no children working so it's a completely new approach of producing watches and jewelry and this tourbillon you mentioned is the very very first in the world that we have presented here in Basel. And um, what is maybe the price of this watch? Uh, it's about 120,000 euros and it's a limited edition to 25 pieces. And you are very specialized and inspired your origins from the pilots. What are actually maybe some uh, highlights of the men's watch collection from this year? The pilot, of course, is a main line. This is one of our lines uh, at Zenit. But we also have the El Primero line, which is uh, um, the daring, which is the vision, which is the chronometry, which is the precision. We have the captain line, which is, uh, uh, let's say, something for adventurers. And we have the pilot line, which is something for reaching the sky and uh, living our dreams. You mentioned also your very popular El Primero collection. And from this year, you launched a very special collection that actually mechanical movement is, uh, you can see at the both sides of the watch. 
That's right. The El Primero is a famous movement which is born in 1969 in Le Locle and developed. It was the very first chronometer integrated at 36,000 uh, uh, oscillations per second. Until then, we continue to develop that movement to optimize. And we have launched this year a very interesting model, which is the tribute to Felix Baumgartner, which is the same El Primero running at 36,000, so very precise. And I think this is something we owe to him because he did uh, something very extraordinary uh, that drum from the atmosphere. Felix Baumgartner is one among your famous modern heroes. Uh, among them also is Mahatma Gandhi with a silver pocket watch from Zenit. Can you uh, share with us maybe other names of uh, the modern Zenit heroes? So actually, Zenit heroes are people having dreams, having a vision, having an entrepreneurship spirit, and this is, these are people enthusiastic and they want to achieve and they don't fear about failure. So, um, of course, Mahatma Gandhi is a, a, a very uh, fantastic hero for Zenit. Felix Baumgartner was one as well, but we have a lot of other ambassadors and I think all our Zenit heroes are people wearing our Zenit mechanical movements. So at Baselworld, uh, Hublot presented his first B-Retrograde watch uh, repeater turbillon, also official watch of the FIFA World Cup. What is the biggest highlight uh, of this year um, innovation? Yes, it's a new chronograph, uh, as you said, with the B-Retro hands. So it's a new display for a chronograph. And as you said, Hublot is the official timekeeper of this 2014 FIFA World Cup that's going to be organized in Brazil. So for Uber is the year of football this year and it's an important year. So we wanted to, to develop and to create a chronograph dedicated to the football world. So it's a 45 minutes chronograph, not 30 minutes. So that allows you to calculate each period of football and you can have the first and sec second period indication. And the idea of those retrograde hands is quite innovative and different. And you have the hour and minute at six o'clock which gives really a look which is totally new for a chronograph. And the other thing is also the, the link with the flag of Brazil. So you, you have a yellow and green touches on the watch because it's the tribute to the FIFA World Cup of this year in Brazil. How many components the watch stands from? So in the movement, it's our Unico movement. It's a manufactured movement, so 100% in-house uh, developed uh, and produced, of course, and uh, uh, as a movement components parts, uh, we are about 350 parts in the movement. There are three main launches, uh, uh, especially in, in, uh, in this second quarter of 2014. Uh, one is the Ayrton Senna limited edition, which is dedicated to, of course, the Formula One uh, champion who passed away sadly 20 years ago. So it's, uh, uh, we, in 1995, we already dedicated a collection to Ayrton Senna, and this is also linked to charity, is supporting the Instituto Ayrton Senna, which is a big organization in Brazil helping children. Um, and then we have another Brazilian themed uh, pen, which is dedicated to Pelé. Pelé, the football champion, the king of football. Uh, and of course, there is a big focus on Brazil because uh, the eyes of the world will be on Brazil this year for the World Cup. Uh, then we have a third uh, main introduction which is called My Guardian Angel. So it's a very uh, sophisticated, uh, um, elaborated, intricate design uh, that took us two years to develop, which is a very, it's a typical Renaissance uh, uh, design uh, which is uh, available in gold and in silver in a price point that starts from uh, uh, 600 euro up to 80,000 euro. Last year you celebrated your 30th anniversary. Um, a luxury timepiece and diamond jewelry house was founded by the young boy who came from Uzbekistan to the US. What was your greatest belief at that time and how did you actually start? Well, I was a teenager when I came to America 
and I had a dream. I, I, when I was 15 years old, I decided that I will become a designer because earlier um, my father got me a job during summer to be a photographer, to learn all the photography, to become a photographer. So I became a photographer and photography gave me a chance and gave me inspiration to design jewelry and watches. So I knew by 15, 15 and a half that I'm going to be jewelry designer and I went and did it. I went to, took, I took courses and um, I just went for it. I always designed something that other people wouldn't do. I always went against the wind, but in the end I was very successful. In early 90s you were known as Jacob the jeweler and nowadays you have quite a lot of ambassadors let's say it's also among celebrities from Hollywood musicians uh, fashion and also sport and what kind of special orders have you made for them maybe if you um, in a way of producing unique pieces well I made uh, many special orders already for many of celebrities maybe you know um, what would I do if I have to do it again? So what new I would design? Is that what the question is? Uh, well, every person has a personality. So I, I design jewelry according to your personality. And for example, I design a diamond hang, hand gloves for Madonna. And that's her personality. This is what she likes. This is what she does with material. I made that in gold materialized with diamonds. She loved it. What I would do now for someone new, um, you know, I didn't think about that. But when, when someone requests something new from me, I would design. Uh, right now I'm so into watches. You know, in this Basel Fair, my, my focus is in specialty watches. Also jewelry, of course. So I would I would design Jay-Z a new watch. What is the character of uh, Swarovski watch, let's say DNA? Uh, who is intent to? What we always try to build in is of course the crystal and the crystal is a very context friendly material and our engineers and our designers uh, were able to really design pieces that are unique and only being used in our watches. You cannot get them in the market. Mm -hmm. And who is the target group uh, of Swarovski watches? Uh, mainly you produce the uh, watches for the ladies. Yes, it's uh, I would say between 90 and 95 percent is uh, ladies watches and, and lady customers. Uh, Swarovski is a very feminine brand and that holds also true for our watch collection. However, uh, we wanted to be a little bit daring and also launched a men's collection in 2011 and it was received uh, quite nicely and it's growing steadily so we have to have something to offer also for the men. And to conclude this pleasant conversation, uh, can you share with us some feelings about Basel World? Well, specifically this year, uh, which is our second year in our, in our new booth here, is uh, very special for us because we've won uh, the Red Dot Design Award for the third time since we've been doing watches and this time we actually won it for our stand. Best Congratulations. Design. Thank you very much. So for us, it was important to come up with a new standard, somehow to go beyond the standard, beyond the norm that exists. So this timepiece is a timepiece that obviously goes through all the quality tests that the Swiss watch industry performs, as well as some military homologation tests. But we did not stop there. We went even further. Um, we figured out a number of tests <coughs> that could simulate very extreme conditions um, and in order to do that, we even had to perform this test in-house because there was absolutely no homologation lab that was equipped to perform these tests. For instance, this watch would stand two hours in a washing machine at 90 degrees. This watch would stand a 10 meter drop test. This watch would resist one minute in the fire. 
This watch would resist in an ice cube for several hours. It would resist temperature shock from minus 100 to plus 70 degrees Celsius. And then we thought, okay, all this is very fine, but we need to really have the ultimate quality statement. And the ultimate quality statement, we, we found it once we engineered the watch in a way that it can stand the pressure of a military tank that has 64 ton. This year we have decided to focus really on Boss Orange, which is uh, our new brand and we have also some novelties for Boss, but the main focus is really Boss Orange. Mm -hmm. And what are the main characteristics of this brand and who is intent to? Uh, so Boss Orange is a generation, a uh, young generation, we call it like the generation on the go. All the um, all the names for the collection are like uh, Sao Paulo, Brisbane, London, Paris. So it's for people between 15 and maybe 25. And it's really different from uh, Boss because there are plenty of colors and the price is also very different. So we want to give the spirits not about Hugo Boss but Mova the group. We are here to uh, reveal that we are group with several brands. Uh, as you have seen outside, there is a special art exhibition. So we want to show that also we support young uh, designers and we want to show that the MOVA the group is really linked to, to, to the art. Almost for a century, Damiani has been a synonym for Italian style in the market of the jewelry. This year you have a splendid anniversary and you are presenting the third generation of the Damiani family. How would you describe the main milestones and the values of Damiani? The value of the company are many and are the same, uh, the same since uh, the foundation and are the same value that uh, my grandfather uh, passed to my father and my father passed to myself and my brother and sister. So first of all uh, the quality, the quality of what you do, uh, of uh, the material, of the manufacture that is very very important. I mean we are producing something that uh, has to last for a life and more than a life and so uh, we have to start uh, with something that has to be done uh, in a perfect way. What are the products that you will celebrate your anniversary this year and also are presented at Basel World? Yes, we decided uh, to celebrate the 90th anniversary with a special collection. So we made a collection that is visible here in Basel and um, is made uh, by one piece for each decade uh, that we went through, so starting from the 20s, uh, finishing from the 2010s, and uh, will be reproduced only in a limited edition by only nine pieces uh, each model. Here you can see all of those exceptional timepieces. Uh, one of them, uh, one collection made with crystal. So it's a very exquisite line of uh, crystal dial uh, timepieces. And what are also other materials that are used in your new collection? Well, this, this year a lot of innovation with materials. Uh, gold, of course, but the, the, the main innovation is with silver. The silver alloy we have developed over the last two years, it's called Silver Star. It's, a, it's an alloy which resists to a tarnishment. So it's a very important innovation for us and we have a worldwide exclusivity on this new alloy. Since the last year you have also a new boot, it's uh, quite natural. It's a beautiful uh, pavilion. It was designed by a Japanese architect, Mr. Toyo Ito, who won the Pritzker Prize last year. And he designed this pavilion with the idea of being close to nature. So as you can see, it's very transparent, it's made of wood. Uh, it's uh, completely surrounded by greenery. I think we have over 200 plants here. And the idea was really to show the organic feel of Hermès. Am 
among the novelties of the Casio uh, Basel World um, for this year, uh, also is uh, G-Shock, actually with the GPS. Yes, this is a totally new technology that we are introducing here at Basel Time. This is a G-Shock that includes two time correction systems. That means it has on the one hand side the well-known radio control technology, but furthermore it includes a GPS technology. That means you can receive the right time wherever you are, in which time zone ever, you will be always having the right time in your watch. And who is intent this watch to in the first line? Well, we have a huge G-Shock fan base. You know, G-Shock is in the market since more than 30 years now. And since that 30 years, we have sold around 70 million G-Shocks worldwide. And we had huge fan base since 90s, where G-Shock was a real boom. And those grown-ups, meanwhile grown-ups, like me, 45 years old, they are now looking for a new G-Shock that fits to the lifestyle, which is probably, probably not resin or plastic, LCD, it is analog and metal made. What are the trends for the German uh, luxury watches and jewelry industry, maybe f uh, in the point of view of the previous year? Mm -hmm. Um, comparing to the previous uh, year, uh, which was uh, very challenging and with a decline in the jewelry sector and uh, uh, quite good figures plus 3% in the watch sector. Now uh, the companies in a, are in a quite good mood. Uh, uh, um, it's better than uh, last year and uh, um, they came here to Basel World with great expectations. You had at Basel World well, a very nice presentation. Actually, companies under the one roof uh, of the Forsyth Pavilion. Yes. The Forsyth Pavilion, this is also one of the trends, uh, is a good signal because uh, companies uh, are working together to show uh, the label made in Germany. In this case, it's also made in Pforzheim. But in general, uh, we want to show made in Germany. We also have an in initiative in the watch sector made in Germany where uh, a lot of companies work together um, because uh, uh, this label is uh, very well known in the world for uh, good technology, for quality. And what we do uh, this year, especially at Basel World, to make this label visible uh, for the con consumer in the watch and jewelry sector. The challenge to anticipate the global needs never is bigger than the idea of one's mind. It grows with the time and it's proud on a past. Welcomes the future because it's meant to happen.